In this final clip of the module, I'd like to show you something you can do to give you an idea whether you've properly placed your joints and if they're going to deform with the geometry in an aesthetically pleasing way. Now, trying to get this geometry to actually deform along with our joints is referred to as skinning, and that's something we're going to be covering later on in this course. It's a whole beast onto itself. However, we can make use of something called proxy geometry in order to give us an idea right now how our geometry will deform around our joints. This will also be very, very useful as we move on to adding controls because it will give us a way to quickly preview how our mesh is going to change and move. So keep in mind that this is optional. However, it can be very helpful as well. So in order to do this, what we need to do is actually take our mesh and split it up into many different pieces, specifically to kind of align with our existing joints. Now, this process can take quite a while. So I'm just going to give you a quick preview, perhaps on the arm over here, how we can get this process started. And then I'll go ahead and show you the end result. So let's say we do want this proxy geometry. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my Cyclops mesh over here. We'll just hit Control D, and we'll go ahead and call this one Cyclops Proxy. Now I'll take this first Cyclops, and it actually looks like it's pivot moved at some point. I'm going to go ahead and just go to pivot mode, X, and kind of just snap that back down to center. I'm going to go ahead and hide this for now. Now, using the Cyclops proxy geometry, I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up my model. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this. The first thing oh, I'm going to do is actually go to my joint layer here. And I'm going to change this to reference so I don't accidentally select my joints. Now, one method is you can come in here and literally just based on the faces, start selecting specific parts of the geometry, kind of like that and start extracting those. So I'll grab this piece here and say, let's go over to modeling, edit mesh, extract. Here we go, we'll go to object mode. I can now grab this piece and hide it. And I can go in and start chopping up the rest of it. Perhaps this piece here. And you can see I'm trying to get it to kind of align with the joints. So we'll grab that piece there, edit mesh, extract. That's now a separate piece I can grab and hide. So we can do the same down here. Let's say I want to kind of chop it off here where it's eventually going to meet that cup joint. I'll go ahead and grab that part. And then we'll go ahead and just kind of select the rest of it there. Just want to be a little bit careful to only get the pieces we really want. Okay. Once again, we'll go here to Edit Mesh, Extract. Now, obviously, you'd want to go in and do all of the fingers as well. I'm not going to do that here in front of you as that can obviously be very time consuming. Now, there is another way you can do this. Now, this mesh doesn't require it because the segments actually run pretty well with the joints, but you can actually make use of a tool here under Mesh Tools called the Multicut. Now, if you go to the options on the Multicut tool, I'm going to go ahead and reset it to the defaults. What you can do is come down here and turn on Extract Faces. That way, every time we make a cut, it'll separate it out into a separate piece. I then want to go ahead and set these here to 0, 0, and 0, so it doesn't try to push them apart. So now let's say if I come over to my side view here, let's say I want to create a cut right across here. I can actually click here, and when I let go, it's actually created a cut for me. Now, this is still all one object. However, if we go to face mode, you could see they are separate elements. So I could go ahead and grab the legs here and go to Edit Mesh and extract. And so you could go do it this way as well. Now this will create some illegal polygons depending on where it actually cuts. Uh, this one looks like it actually cut fairly clean, but obviously if I cut through kind of any intersection there, that could have been an issue. But that's not something to worry about with proxy geometry because this geometry is never going to deform. Now I choose to usually go about it the way I was doing it here where I manually select, but again, either method would work just fine. To go ahead and finish this off, let's go ahead and make a couple more pieces here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's say, all of that right there. And actually, I don't believe I need that one there. We'll just keep this piece here. Edit Mesh Extract. Go ahead and grab that and hide it. And we'll do just one more here. We'll go ahead and this one looks like it's probably going to be best to maybe select kind of right there. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and deselect that. All right. So we'll go ahead once again, Edit Mesh, Extract. Now, what I want to do is find all of these pieces. They're going to be here in my outliner under Cyclops Proxy, but you can see they're all kind of parented in strange ways. What we want to do is select all of this here, go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, to kind of clean all that out. And then what we want to do is show everything, Display, Show, All. There we go. We'll hide the old Cyclops mesh because it's in the way. And you can see we now have all these separate pieces. To make sure we don't have this strange kind of parenting structure, I'm going to go ahead and grab each one of these pieces right there. Looks like that one's still kind of attached up there, so it looks like I still need to extract this one. I'll go ahead and double click. We'll just extract the whole hand. Extract. There we go. And I also want to kill the history on this, so edit, delete by type, history. There we go. Now I can go ahead and grab all of these pieces. There we go. I'll go ahead and hit Control G to group them. That kind of gets them out of this hierarchy here. You can also just kind of all grab them now and throw them right into Cyclops Proxy. And now I can delete these other groups. There. Looks like I still left a piece of him in here. He's in there somewhere. We'll have to actually kill this history. Edit. Delete by type. History. There we go. And we'll just throw that back into Cyclops Proxy as well. Looks like the legs are still in there as well. I should probably clean that out as well. So there it is. We'll just go ahead and throw that in there. There we go. So you can see all these are now separate pieces. Now you'd want to go through and separate out all the different pieces. I found for this character that's about 65 separate pieces, but that of course includes every finger joint. That's why there's so many. Otherwise it's actually not that many at all. What I can do then, I'm going to go ahead and unreference my joint layer, is start attaching these pieces directly to my joints. Now, I prefer to do this using a constraint. You can also parent them, but what I don't like about that is if you parent them, they're all part of the same display layer, and I like to keep them as separate display layers. So the way we could do this with constraints is we'll switch to the animation menu. I'll come here to constraint and open up the parent constraint. Just bring that right over here. We can use all of the defaults. And for example, now I can grab this joint here. Actually, let's start down here. Grab this one, followed by the geometry. It's always joint first, hit apply. Followed by the geometry, apply. Grab the joint here, geometry, apply. Joint, geometry, apply. And we'll do that just for these last couple pieces in here. So basically, we're telling it that the geometry is constrained to the joint through a parenting type relationship. And what we have now is the ability to actually have our geometry to follow along with our joints. And it gives us a pretty decent preview of how things are going to deform. So again, this is a time consuming process. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this process off screen and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so here is the finished one. So you could see that everything's been attached. Everything's been kind of cut and sliced up. You could see everything deforms nice and cleanly. And it gives us a nice way to preview how our mesh will deform. You can see even up over here. Now, you'll notice the eye and the teeth actually follow along. I went ahead and did the same thing with the eyes and the teeth. I just parent constrained them. I constrained the eye to this joint and the jaw, the lower jaw, to this joint over here and the upper teeth to this head joint over here. And you can see now our character looks like he's actually deforming along with the joints. It's a quick and easy trick, and I've even gone ahead and added all of this proxy geometry. You can see here's all the pieces. I went ahead and just generically named them all proxy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. You can go ahead and name them more specifically if you'd like. But I've gone ahead and added them to their own proxy geometry layer here. So we can actually hide or unhide those. So that brings this module to a close. Let's go ahead and see what we've covered. In this module, we started by taking a look at how we can create and edit joints. Now, the editing of joints involves taking a look at parenting our joints, connecting our joints, inserting our joints, and mirroring our joints. We also took a look at joint orientation, specifically working with local rotation axes. After that, we took a look at working with rotation order and gimbal lock. We took a look at also creating a joint layout specifically for the character that we're rigging. 
We took a look at creating naming conventions to keep things in order, and we finished off by taking a look at how we can create proxy geometry to preview how our character will deform. So that brings this module to a close, and I'll see you all in the next one.